Hello all, welcome to orotrainings.com. In this session, we'll discuss about Oracle Apex. This is an introduction session. We'll just try to understand what is Apex, what are the prerequisites, what are the program languages involved, and the history of Oracle Apex. Okay, let's get into agenda. And we'll also discuss about the Hello World sample in Oracle Apex. So why does we use Oracle Apex? What is the purpose of it? It is one of the world's most popular low-code platform for enterprise applications, okay? And using Apex, you can reduce 98% of hand coding. It means that you don't need to write any of the coding. Like uh, it can be either Java or a C language or a Python. It doesn't need to write any of the coding in this Apex. Of course, you may need to write some set of JavaScript or a jQuery or maybe a Jet, but that is very minimal, okay? It says 98% of coding you can remove, nothing but only 2% of, of the chances or time where you need to write the coding, okay? And if at all, and how about the license? Like nothing but, is it a different software and how does it come? It's nothing but like when you install Oracle database, you have Oracle Apex. It means that Apex is a free, free application development platform, which comes when you install Oracle database, okay? And um, is it a new application or is it old application and what is a, effectiveness of this application in the market and uh, how long it, it has been there. So it has been there in the market from the past 17 years and it has evolved in a different flavor, nothing but initially it started with HTML DB, which was released in 2004. And now the latest release was in, 20, uh, in 2020 with the release 20.2, okay? It may, be a, it may also have a new release, but as per the Oracle latest documentation, the date which I took the screenshot, it is 20.2 and the latest release is on 20, October 2020, okay? and this is a very low code application development platform. And what does it provide? It provides us the tools and set of components and set of uh, functionalities, which we can design the application for a cloud, or it can be for the on-premise application. And also it allows us to design the application for the mobile as well as web-based application, okay? It has a large number of features, like a similar to a normal web application development, like uh, changing the themes and the different set of controller and uh, page navigation handling and the UI components and the triggering events and a set of report components, which are very much important. And also the graphical a graph set of components, the maps, attachment functionality, a lot more are there in this Apex. We, without writing any code, you can simply use them, okay? And how do we start it? Like um, there are a number of ways, like uh, one of the way what you can do is if at all, if you want to work with your particular local application development, I mean, nothing but using your desktop or laptop, what you can do is you can install Oracle XC, Oracle XC database, as well as you, can, you need to install Oracle Apex also, but let us say if you don't want to have any installation required, what is the other way? Yes, we have a very easiest way, which I'll be considering in our session that is using apex.oracle.com. You just simply log into this website and sign up, that's it. You don't require any credit card. You don't require any of the registration process, okay? Simply it's a free and it's for the development environment. It's very free for the developers to work on into this one. You simply sign up and you can start with creating the application. And before starting, uh, before starting Apex as a developer or as a novice or a fresher, what does we need to, what is required to learn this one? And I can say you don't require, you don't require any knowledge or you don't require any other programming knowledge before you start with Apex. But of course, if you have some knowledge on any of the database application or any of the web technologies or any other web service information, it will add up an advantage, but it is not literally mandatory, okay? It is of course a database application development environment. If you just know the basics of database, like a SQL and PL SQL, that is very much important for this one. And also if you have a knowledge on the REST services, it is very much helpful for you while designing the application. These are good to have, even though I mentioned it is mandatory, it's just a good to have, even if you don't have it, but while designing the application, you can simply learn them and you can easily sail through the application development. And if at all, if you're coming from the Visual Builder Cloud Service, or if you're trying to compare what is Apex and what is Visual Builder, this is one of the information which Oracle says, like uh, what is the purpose and what is a different sort of, you know, like a framework and all those things. Let us go one by one. The development or deployment, Apex is a SQL PL SQL based application development environment. Visual Builder is a JavaScript and REST based application environment or nothing but the skill which we need require, which are required to design application. Like for Apex, you require SQL PL SQL, but the Visual Builder Cloud Service, you require either JavaScript as well as REST. 
come into the development or deployment. So you can design, develop application using Apex on on-premise as well as cloud. But for the visual builder, it is pure pass environment. It's a pure cloud, okay? And primary use case, like in which scenarios you generally use it, it is purely for the data centric application development. Like when you have a database, whether you have a ERP or you don't have ERP, but when you have Oracle database, if you want to design some application development, you can simply go with Apex. And generally Visual Builder, it is mostly preferred when you want to extend your Oracle Cloud ERP, nothing but Oracle SaaS extension, you call them as, okay? Data access. All the data which you have in the database can be accessed through SQL, or you can also use either REST or SOAP services. But in the Visual Builder, it is always REST. No other web service is allowed in Visual Builder. And architecture-wise, it is based on a model, model interpreter architecture, where you know, like uh, whatever the database coding which you have, it will interpret internally and generate HTML code. That's what Apex does. But coming to the Visual Builder, it has a framework called JavaScript extension toolkit. Using this one, it will generate the HTML page at runtime. And coming to the maturity, yes, it is there in the market from the past 15 years and it has evolved with a different set of flavors, different set of functionalities day by day. It has been releasing larger number of functionalities. Coming to the VBCS, it is just there in the market. Maybe uh, I can say it's a couple of years, like maybe four years. And design for, it is especially for the database developers or SQL developers who has very good amount of knowledge on SQL. And coming to Visual Builder, where you require good amount of programming on the JavaScript, okay? Now, coming to the next slide. How do you sign up for Apex? Okay, when you get into apex.oracle.com, you have a different set of options, like uh, get started for free, okay? You simply click on get started for free. And what you can do is here, if you observe, when you, if you're trying to go with cloud.oracle.com where you require a cloud trial account in which you also have a Apex service. But I don't prefer this one because you need to have, you need to have a credit card and you need to sign up and also it will be only 30 day trial. But when you go with apex.oracle.com, it is simply free and generally it is, it will not purchase the data even for six months also. Even if it is, let us say if your account got expired or purged, you can simply sign up again with the same email ID, but with a different workspace. Okay, next one. And when you're requesting for a workspace here, if you observe, like you just need to click on get started for free and you need to click on request for a workspace and just mention the details. Like here, if you observe, I mentioned my username, like a first name, last name, the workspace name, and it will ask you whether you are using Apex or you need to Apex or you are using for this purpose of a training or a university class or something like that next. And you just mention what is your, like why are you requesting this service, service and the justification and the agreement, okay? And within couple of, within couple of seconds, you will, receive an email saying that like your particular Apex application workspace is approved and you will receive the details. You can just simply click on create workspace, then it will create the workspace and where you can sign up. Okay. So before proceeding further, what we'll do is we'll try to request a workspace and see how it works. Okay. So now I will log into apex.oracle.com website. Let me go here. Yep. Apex.oracle.com. Okay. And I'll just click on get started for free. Okay. And here, if you observe, we have different options like a sign up for free tire or request for a workspace. Simply click on request a free workspace. Don't go with any other option. This is one of the very easiest option. So I'll just say my details. Okay. And I'll say Apex WS workspace one. and scroll down and you can just go with personal usage that's fine and are you new to yes i'll say and yes i'll say here and for learning and sharing knowledge next you have to accept the agreement okay that's it please enter a different schema name different schema name okay so let's try. So what you can do is like the, what are the workspace name we mentioned, right? Just mention that a different name. So it will allow you to mention a unique name. So I'll just mention Apex September. Okay. Let's try this again. Accept the agreement, click on next. Okay, 
workspace requested. It is not yet approved. You will receive an email to activate your workspace. Once you activate, then only you can log in with your Apex stuff, okay? By this time, maybe a couple of seconds, you just need to receive an email. If not, just wait, it'll get approved, okay? So what we can do is before that, like maybe like rather than waiting for that, what you can do is we'll try to understand how do you log in it? Let us say, assume that you have requested a workspace and it is approved and how do you log in it, right? So let me log in now into my Apex. So I'll just log out once. Okay, return to sign in page. So log, what is the website for login? You just need to log, navigate to apex.oracle.com, click on sign in, and you just need to mention your workspace name, username, password. Okay, and click on sign in, that's it. Once you navigate to Apex, the initial landing page, what you see, it's, a, it's called Apex Workspace, okay? Where you have the set of developer tools, like nothing but application builder, SQL workshop, team development, and gallery. Let us understand one by one what is they used for, okay? Application builder is a tool which we use for the purpose of creating application as well as importing an application, okay? So the high level component in the Oracle Apex is a application. Of course, workspace comes before application, but as a developer, let us understand when you navigate, when you log into the Apex, what is the first thing? Let us say if you want to design any page, what do you have to do it? Workspace, okay? You need to create a workspace and from there you can design a page as well as some other like a report component. Application Builder is a tool which we use for the purpose of designing the application, okay? Next, SQL Workshop. As the name itself says SQL Workshop. So it will have a set of tools which are available for the purpose of managing database object, like creating a table, creating all the database object, even creating the PL SQL component also. Next one, team developer, it will have some set of templates which are available where we use it for the purpose of tracking and managing the issues, okay? The last one is a gallery where you have some set of starter application, sample application and plugins which are available for free for the developer from the Oracle Apex GitHub. You can simply navigate to this website, GitHub of Oracle Apex, and where you can get where you can get larger number of samples, which are which will very helpful for the, for the developer to work with Apex. Okay. So how do we design the sample application? Okay. So let's go with go to the Apex website. Now, how do you start it? Right. Just click on App Builder. Okay. Now it shows a list of applications which are already there. Okay, but assume that if you don't have any of the application, how do you, how do you create it? Let us say, let's click on create. And it is asking whether, how do you want to create application from the file you want to upload or whether you want to do it from a scratch or do you want to install any of the starter app? I just want to create a new application here. So I'll just click here, new application. And I'll mention my application name, hello world Apex app. And by default, you may have these set of pages and you can also uncheck it or check it. I'll just check this one, the feature page and home page will be there by default. And the remaining, I'll just go with the default. I don't want to mention any other changes. I'll just simply click on create application. It'll take a couple of seconds to create an application. That's it, your application is ready. And by default here, if you observe these number of pages got generated by default, home page, login page, about page, help page and the global desktop page, okay? Now just click on this particular run button and your page will get run. Okay, so you need to mention the password. So this password is similar to the same password which we use it for the purpose of logging into your Apex. Okay, when you request a workspace, you doesn't need to, it does not need to mention any password, but when you are, you will receive an approval email, right? So now here, here if you observe, not sure whether I have received yet. Yep, by this time I received the email from the Oracle saying that particular like uh, my, Apex, my Apex request workspace is approved and I can simply log in it. Now here, if you observe, how do I do it? You just need to click on create workspace and there you can mention like here, if you observe, it clearly tells, right? Clear, cl click the button below to complete the approval process and set your password. Now at this point of time, you need to set your password. Now it is actually starting creation of the workspace. Okay, now click on continue to sign in screen. Okay, you can mention the password now. A single email, you can create a number of workspaces, okay? Okay. Now here, if you observe, this is my workspace name, Apex September 001, right? But if you observe in my other, another particular 
browser window, here you can see the workspace name is Aura Trainings. Okay. Now, what we do is we just ran the page, and this is how it looks like. It did not have any other page, right? It just have only Hello World application, right? So I'll just create a dummy page now, a simple page. Click on Create Page. Okay. You have large number of details, like you can create a blank page, you can create a report, you can create a form, many things. Now, what we do is we'll quickly try to create a report. Okay. I'll just click on interactive report, click on next. I'll just say EMP interactive report. Click on next. I'll just create select create a new navigation entry like this. And I just mention EMP report. Now it is asking which table we want to select. You can just select on this particular one and you can select the table name, click on search, EMP table, click on next. Okay, it will generate the page and based on the table which we selected, by default, it will display all the columns in the, page, in the report and you can simply run the report, that's it. Right, our report is ready and you can see a navigation menu here, right, EMP report. Okay, this is how this much quickly you can design a report in Apex. Just a couple of seconds, you can design application as well as report. Of course, if your particular component is complex, it may take a good amount of time, but in our case, we just want to design a very simple one, right? So this is how we can design an application in the Apex. Okay, so we saw all these things like uh, we have created a report, but if at all, if you want to create a create any of the form, also you can do the similar process. Now, in this case, we are just simply created a a dummy page, nothing but a blank page where we mention the details. And by default, when you create a blank page, it will not have any component. Okay. You can just place the component and you can see how it looks like. So in this case, we just dragged and dropped a very simple component, the text area component. And this is how it looks like when you just use that. Okay. So if at all, if you want to get more information on the Apex, you can refer to this set of documentation website. And also maybe you can refer to docs.oracle.com where you can find out good amount of documentation regarding. Article Apex. Thank you.